I remember when I got the task to render a wine label for a graphic designer. And no matter how much I tried, I just couldn't get the gold foil to look good. So if you're anything like I was, you know how frustrating this can be. So today I'm going to go through my method to creating a stunning foil texture. I'll also reveal the one crucial element that can make or break your texture no matter how perfect it is. Let's jump in. I just want to let you know that we've built a free course to help you get started and up and running with product visualization in Blender. And so if you just go to interactive.studio, you can sign up to a course which will go through a complete project creating a iPhone 15 render and I'll go through modeling it all the way to lighting and rendering it. You can also find the link for it down in the description. So this is my full texture that we're going to create today and I'm going to break it down and try to keep it as simple as possible while explaining what is going on here. So let's have an overall look at the whole chain. So basically the foil texture is just this group here inside this frame. And so the rest of this is displacement over here. And then we've got the paper texture here. And so we'll focus on the foil texture. Then I'll jump up to just how to mask the foil texture quickly. So the first thing we'll do is we'll rebuild this. So I'll have this sort of side by side and we can rebuild it. So we start off with a principal shader. So let's just shift A to add a new object here and you can just search there just by clicking or you can just start typing and it will come up. So principled BSDF, this allows us to create our shaders and materials. So the first thing that we'll notice with a gold material is it's metallic. It's sort of like a metal. And so if we use our control shift click and click on the principal BSDF, that's going to connect our output socket all the way to the input of our surface for our material output. And this material output basically tells Blender what to place over here on our label. So the first thing I want to do is set a color. And so we'll come up here and generally I come into this zone here, into the yellows here. And I tend to reduce the saturation of this. So it's a little bit more rosy than it is deep. And this depends on the color of your gold. Some golds are really rich, but for now, we'll keep it up in here and I'll just check what I've got over here. Yeah, similar. The next one is metallic. This is just whether the surface is metal or not. And so I'll bump this up to one because it is a metallic surface. And so then we've got roughness. Now I don't reduce this all the way. I tend to go something like a 0.1 or a point point two or three, we can check what I've got up here. And you'll see instantly that this now is looking more like a gold metal than a foil. And so we need some textures on this. So we'll bump this up a little bit more, make it a little bit more rough. And that'll allow this area here to not be as dark if it doesn't have any lighting. You'll see that if we drop the roughness all the way to nothing, this goes black, this area. And that's because there's no light bouncing off it. So we'll re increase that to something like 0.2. It'll roughen it out a little bit and this will diffuse some of that light and give it a little bit of color in those darker areas. So then the next bit that I would work on is this bump line here. So we want to add a bit of bump to this to sort of bounce the light off in different directions. So the first thing to do that with is we're going to use a noise texture. So let's place down a noise texture and we'll go through some of the settings. So we'll go noise texture here. And if we go control shift click, we can look at this. This is with node wrangler, by the way. And the first thing you notice is this is off. 
so there's something wrong with this and so with node wrangler we can click this and go control t and we can see what is going on here so let's break that here we can see what's going on node wrangler will automatically add a mapping and also a texture coordinate and so basically the texture coordinate will give blender a way to put the texture onto our object and so it's basically coordinates and so currently it's generated and so this is basically blender generating a sort of a way to put this onto the texture so the noise and you can see that this is quite rounded and so it's not generating it correctly and so that's why we use UVs and so UVs are over here and what I can do is I can select my label let's go slash here so I've got my label selected and this is what my UVs look like if I put an image behind this so let's put maybe this one there so this is our image so you can see here that our UVs are determining where our label is going based off this here so what I want to do with this is use the UVs so if I go UV we plug it into the vector you can see now that we're using those UVs to place the noise texture onto our label so the next thing is you can sort of see some dark and white areas so we want to scale this and so we want to make this extra small and so we'll put the number up to something like 5000 you can see now that's a grain we'll go not as high let's go 500 and we get something like this all right so we want to change some more details in this because we need to get this into the normal so to do that we can use a bump node so just search for bump and we'll take the factor of the noise texture which is what we're looking at right now and we'll plug it into the height of the bump node and then this will convert it to a normal map which just looks like this and this is a way for blender to read height and calculate the light bouncing off this so we can plug this into our normal now if we control shift click our principle we're now mixing the metallic with the bump map so the first thing you'll notice is this looks terrible so we want to reduce the strength incredibly low so 0.25 something like that and sometimes we have to go extremely low so 0 0.025 really low something like that the next thing I want to do is just play around with some of these settings in here. So detail, if we have a look at it, we can adjust this. So let's go to five. And we can't see a ton. Let's add the roughness. And we'll take a look at some of the settings. We've got 0.5, details five. Pretty much default settings for most of it and then we come through to this and so this is our texture another thing is if you box select all this and go scale on the y axis which is the vertical axis in this case you can basically neaten all that out so now we've got our foil texture the next thing that we need to do is mask this and so we just want it to look like this so it's only showing here and so you'll have to export an image of your texture that is black and white and so you can pick either way around you can say I want the white area to be the label which in this case will be the top slot 
and there's an inverted color here so this is what it looks like before we plug it into the mix shader and so the mix shader will just mix two shaders together so we've got one which is our paper and our all of our design and then the other one that's mixing is our foil texture and so the this here this image here that is our mask is telling blender which way to mix it and it's just inverted because I did it the wrong way around inside Photoshop. So inside Photoshop, I did it where the black is the foil and the white is the paper texture. And if we plug that directly into the mix shader, you can see it's the wrong way around. So you can just invert it before it goes in there and that will invert the values. So then we've got this. The other thing that I've got going on here is just a mix. So you can see here that we've got the mix shader, which is plugged into a noise. And so this noise is set really high. Probably doesn't need to be set that high because we won't be able to see the difference. But then that noise is plugged into the factor and then that factor is set to mix which means that any light values in this will show either a or b so i think the light values show a and the dark values of this show b and so i'll reduce this so that you can sort of see what's going on looks like we need some mapping here We'll go to UV, something like that. So let's look at the dark value here and we'll go to here. So factor, dark value is showing A. And so if I put blue in here, you can see this is our noise texture. See the dark value when we control shift click here, it goes to blue. So they're just two different colors here. What I can do is mix two colors and then I get something like this. Then we increase the scale 500. Let's go even higher 1000. And then you can plug it into the color here and it will just add a little bit more variance to it. Not necessary. I think this result is just as good here. So if we come up here and plug this in just a slightly different color so we'll add more saturation to this a little bit more saturation something like that we can also increase the scale a bit if we wanted there you go all right, so the last thing to talk about here is actually just lighting. So there is a problem when you do foil textures, and that is if you don't have good lighting, it won't look good at all. So if I come in here and I've got lights, so we've got two lights here. These are plain planes, and this basically here is color ramp and so if I turn this on let's rotate around that's what my light looks like see that and so basically it's a texture coordinate set to object which takes the position of the object itself and the default unwrapping that blender has for this then we've got a mapping I've just scaled this down slightly then that is plugged into a gradient texture and so that creates a gradient on this plane then i've got it plugged into a color ramp and that color ramp will take the dark and light values and will be controlled by this and so i've reset this up and so i can control where this light hits on this bottle with this gradient and then i've got plugged into a mission to so that it sends out light like so and so it will only send out light from the white areas here and so now we get let's and so now if i look through my camera here 
and I just rotate we've got this light bouncing off there and you can see it sort of fades off on the ends here on either side so lighting will be the half of it when you do this sort of thing where you have to really focus on the lighting for this because you want to look make the foil look fairly nice and so if you think of this as a mirror foil as a mirror and say you're looking at a mirror if we go if we draw a mirror here and we are sort of like let's come here let's say we are here and let's take this light source for example there's a light here if we look at the mirror from this angle we're not going to see this light all we're going to see is the reflection of us but if we move over to the side here and then we look at the mirror from that angle we're going to see the view from over here and so we're more likely to see the light if we move over well this works the same for reflections so if we're at this angle at this angle with the camera looking straight at it so it's looking straight at let's uh hide some of the other cameras so this camera is looking straight at our scene and this bit here this dark bit if i turn on my overlays this currently is obviously bouncing back into an area of one of these two lights where the gradient is black and so if we have a look here so it's bouncing back into this area so this area is black let's clear this and so that's our light so because this area is black here because of our camera's angle pointing at this the reflection of that is the dark area but if we go a little bit over so if we point our camera a little bit here and it's bouncing off we're seeing the light areas and so this part of our gradient here is white and emitting light and it's bouncing off this area here and then we've got this gradient here which is also light which is giving us this but this area is dark because this area of the gradient is black I hope this makes sense but basically work on your lighting after you've got your foil texture fairly good because chances are it's probably your lighting that it's affecting most or creating most of the issue when you do your foil I see that all the all the time where people don't have lights in the scene so if I got the wrong light but if we go here select this guy hide him so they'll have this sort of thing going on where they have a world light here and you see straight away that's our foil texture with that world light so if we go point two let's turn these back on so you see as soon as you remove the, this lighting you see how different it goes with world lighting and I see tons of people using world lighting and you can if you're using a HDRI and every now and again I'll have it very low but lighting affects your foiling so much that you have to you have to work on your lighting more than your foil texture all right I hope you found this video useful and if you want to learn how to do this whole layering setup I've got another video which you can see here.